Oh, and let's add a custom villager type to our Minecraft mod. More in-depth topics for Minecraft modding available in the 121 modding courses linked below, covering writable and tameable entities, custom entity armor, and even custom entity inventories, among many more awesome topics. Oh ho 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 ho! All right, we find ourselves back in Cherry once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom villager type to our Minecraft mod, and you will find this is way more straightforward than you might think. However, it will require sort of two different components to be added. But let's just see. In our Kaumjo tutorial mod package, we're going to right click new package called villager. And there we'll need a singular Java class. That's going to be the mod villagers class. Now here, oh boy, we're going to do a lot of things over here. The first thing is the register method. Let's just do that. So this is going to be a public static void register villagers method. And here, of course, we're going to once again do a logger spam. So tutorial mod .logger .info registering villagers for tutorial mod mod id as per usual this is not strictly needed however it is nice to just do something in the register method and let's go to the tutorial mod class to actually call this mod villagers dot register villagers and then we need a couple of helper methods we don't necessarily need them but it is quite nice um, in this case, I'm actually going to copy all of them over because that is going to be making this a little bit more, like a little bit easier. Uh, you have all of this, including all of the code and everything available to you down below in the description in the GitHub repository. So you can basically double check it there. But of course, here we're going to go through and explain everything that we have. From the bottom to the top, the first one over here is the register poi key method. This basically gets you a registry key of a point of interest type. So the idea here is that we're going to need a point of interest that is then associated with a key and we also need a villager profession now the first question you might have is what the frick is even a point of interest type and the th the idea here is that the point of interest is going to be a basically we're defining a block that the villager can go to and get its profession from right so in our case what we're actually going to do is we're going to make this our chair but you can make it any block including vanilla do note though that if it already has a point of interest then it can't have another point of interest. So you can't like register another one that is quite important. So that's basically sort of the registry key and the register POI. Here is also quite important. There is a ticket count in a search distance. The ticket count basically means that uh, this is how many villagers can actually get the same profession from the same block, right? That's the idea. And then there you go. When it comes to the profession here, we're basically, it's just, you know, we're just it's taking the name over here, taking the name over here. And then these two entries right here, those are basically just like, hey, what is our point of interest for this particular profession? That's basically just what these two predicates do. And then we have two immutable sets that are empty. If I were to control left click on the villager profession and go into this class, then we actually can see that that is going to be the, uh, where is it? It is right here, the secondary job site, as well as the gatherable items. Now, in our case, we have neither of those. So we can literally just basically just keep them empty over here or just like empty sets. And then the last one here is the sound event that gets, well, basically called or, you know, basically is emitted when the villager gets his profession and is working at the point of interest. And now we need to do two th uh, three things, actually. We want to register a public static final registry key of type point of interest type. This is going to be the kaupen underscore poi underscore key equal to the register poi key method that we've defined. Kaupen underscore poi is going to be the name, very important. Then we have a public static final this is not a registry key, but a point of interest type. This is going to be the count underscore poi equal to the register poi method. This is the count underscore poi. And the second parameter is mod blocks dot share. So here we're taking the chair and getting it, well, basically passing it in right here. And you can see that is done in the register method. And there you go. That's basically all we have for the point of interest type. So those are going to be the two methods used there. And then the villager profession public static final villager profession which is going to be the kaupenger equal to register profession and this is the kaupen kaupenger there we go and here kaupen poi key and that is it now we have all three of these things registered but of course it's not done quite just yet because we still need some assets as well as some data which is both very important starting with the translation now, the translation, as you can see, is entity Minecraft Villager Tutorial Mod Kaupinger, of course, the name right here, given from the name right here, should be fairly self-explanatory. And if we don't do this, then if we were to open the inventory of the Kaupinger, then it would show us the non-translated name. And that's, of course, not something we want. And we also need for the Kaupinger a texture. Now, this one is going to be 
under the following names over here. There's going to be assets, tutorial mode, textures, entity. I'm going to make a new directory called villager. Make sure that all of this is written correctly as well. And then in the villager directory, a, another one called profession. And there we're going to add the cowpinger.png. Of course, the name here, once again, matching the name right here. Very important. And the PNG, of course, it will also be available to you down below for download. Now, under data Minecraft tags, we need to create a new tag. And this is very important because the, the naming here of the of both the folder as well as the JSON file, very <laughs> it has to be exact. And it is a very difficult thing, or rather, it's very prone to making a typo. Data Minecraft tags. We're going to make a new directory called point underscore of underscore interest underscore type. There we go. That should be correct. Yes, this looks correct. And inside of it, we're going to make a new file called the acquirable underscore job underscore site that JSON. Yeah. So like I said, very easy to make a typo here. So I highly recommend you simply go into the GitHub repository and actually copy over the name. Make sure that this is written correctly. If it does not work, then there has to be a typo somewhere or it's, you know, it's in the wrong folder or something like that. You can double check this as well. The actual tag itself, the contents of this look like this is basically a normal um, a normal tag. And count underscore poi over here, of course, then matches both the name on the registration as well as the name of the registry key. So both of those have to match and then you're basically going to be good to go. Now with this, now we've added everything. Very importantly as well, our custom villager right now is not going to have any trades. We're going to add the trade in the next tutorial. But for the time being, let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, fans, back in Minecraft. Let's set down a couple of chairs over here. And if I spawn the villagers, they should hopefully go to the chairs. And look at this. A whole bunch of me's are running around. What the frick is happening over here? And of course, you can see if I right click them, well, they don't have any uh, well current trades. So that is why that happens. But there you go. That is custom villager types added to Minecraft. Awesome. And as per usual, all of the code is available to you down below. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about custom villager trades. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.